We are actually at Konika Manolta's Digital Imaging Square. There are 19 such squares in the world, and perhaps we are the youngest subsidiary in the world to have got it. We have got an investment over two and a half million dollars in this particular flow. This showcases not just our technology, but also all related technologies. For example, um, the workflows that come onto production printing is also hosted here. All related softwares and uh, things are loaded. We here also have this whole place, which is uh, primarily um, showcases the various jobs that can be done on our engines. So, for example, if you take this high promo, this is this particular. These prints are actually done on something which we call the iChroma. iChroma enables us to be able to do on uh, most of this RM, uh, RGB gamut. Most of the RGB gamut in CMYK process. well accepted by the customers here in India. And so uh, when we do take uh, our plans, when we do make plans, India always has a special strategic uh, okay. place. Uh, but specifically now with the India Making, the Making India campaign which Mr. Narendra Modi launched in the Davos Summit 2015, like, do you feel that has impacted the way Japanese industries now towards India? It's, uh, it is actually very interesting. You know, my current MD is uh, Eugene Nakata. Yeah. Nakata son made a statement a couple of days ago. He said, you know, he was in charge of China when China opened up. That was almost 20 years ago. And uh, he was, he saw what it did to China and uh, how we could participate and grow. And he said, I never thought I would ever get to see that happening in another economy in my lifetime. And uh, he today is here and he's participating in this. So there is a tremendous opportunity this uh, kickstarting the economy can, have, can lead to. We find that the tier three, tier four cities would, where the economy there would be far more, the growth would be far more. We see urbanization of Tier 3 and Tier 4 creating further more opportunities. And surprisingly, if you look at what Konika Manolta has grown over the last five years, the maximum growth has actually been in Tier 2 and Tier 3, rather than in metros. Because you know the technology that Konika Manolta has, has the lowest power consumption. We have models here which can actually run on a car battery. So, it has been a good opportunity so far. And if more and more econ economic activity happens in these cities through these initiatives of the government, it should actually help us to grow. Uh, so you touched upon this, of course, already. But I'm just curious to understand what is the size and scope of the current business operations in India? And how is that looking to expand? If you could just specifically give us perhaps figures as to the kind of revenue that's being churned in India, both in, term, in rural and urban areas. Okay. Um, see, Konika Manolta, we have been growing at least at about 25% year on year in the past three years. And uh, so we are just. Konika Manolta, India? India. Oh, okay. Globally, too, from what we have heard, globally, too. Uh, Within the group, I mean, within the industry, among us, others in the printing industry, I think we have grown the maximum globally too in this last fiscal. Now, within India, we have been on a growth path, driven both by our production engines as well as production business, as well as our office engines, which you see behind. Now, so we today are just shy of 400 crores. 
and uh, we are targeting again a good growth for the next fiscal. Okay. Uh, much more than these, actually these numbers are just results of an activity. Um, if you want to measure, what we like to measure ourselves are the fact that we have been able to bring technology to uh, tier two and tier three cities far more than other brands. We have been able to uh, get them to experience it, which is cutting edge, same as any other place in anywhere else in the world. We have been able to create through our production engines, more than 50% of our customers who have bought production engines are first time into digital production printing, or this time into production printing. Which means we have created so many people out there, we have created wealth for all of them. Our technology has helped to create wealth for all of them. I think that has been far more satisfying for us rather than the result, in terms of just financial numbers or numbers of boxes that we sell. Um, you take, uh, Today, thanks to the technology that we are able to, our small copiers, MFPs are able to even operate on a car battery, villages where they could not have that technology, today they are able to use, our, use the technology of an MFP. So that has been very satisfying. The fact that we have been able to build a channel network of more than 140, 150 people, whose businesses are tied to us and who have been able to grow and participate in this and help us grow, that has been very satisfying for us. And most of all, the fact that we have had a very, we enjoy a very high repeat buy ratio. Most of our customers come back and buy again. It shows that our technology has been able to deliver value to them. Our service network has been able to take care of them once after they buy the product. Those have been far more satisfying aspects of our growth than just the fact that you know we are growing. I think it's curious when you mention tier two and tier three uh, towns and perhaps smaller villages. So, uh, was that a specific strategy that Polika Minota entered India with, or did that happen by chance? And if so, what what are the unique challenges that you faced in growing uh, your market share in rural areas? See, Polika Minota grew primarily because we gave a good value proposition to the ecosystem. Uh, we had great products and technology, and we knew that we did not have a direct presence. So what we did was uh, we made sure that we were able to offer a platform to a lot of people to tie into our technology and take the technology to market. It was worth the why. So, and secondly, uh, so that was a clear strategy, that we would like to build a channel network, Pan India, and not limited to metros. Okay, so you're saying that Konica Minolta has a channel network that is, and Konica Minolta powers the back end for yes. this network, which in turn caters to tier yeah. two tier. Yeah. Okay. And all over, including metros. So that was critical for us. We did that. And the other aspect about Konica Minolta is, we do not differentiate between globally. This is a global. We do not differentiate between a Konica Minolta employee and a partner or a partner employee when it comes to resources. They have access to the same portal for training, for technical bulletins, for support, as a direct Konica Minolta employee. Certification process on technology, on service standards, is the same whether I'm a Konica Minolta employee or I'm a partner. We take the same exams. We get the same certificates. Now, that has been a key differentiator because that has enabled us to go and make sure that we, at the end, when the customer experiences the product, it is taken care of by qualified people to the same standards across. Okay, okay. okay so now let's turn our attention to perhaps one particular segment, which is the color printing segment. And I understand Konica Minolta is one of the items on Konica Minolta's agenda is to grow that market in India as well, specifically the color printer market. So uh, how is that strategy been panning out? Because I think in India there is still a prevalent idea that color printers are expensive. So ha has the company attempted to subsidize prices for the Indian market? Uh, no. See, color is not about pricing alone. Price is important, yes. But color is also about, um, it's how you use color. Um, just imagine a world without color. I mean, 
it just is not possible. Now, as long as color is able to increase productivity, it is able to increase an impact, improve communication, color will always be used. Color, just for the sake of using color, doesn't make sense. Uh, typically, if you see the theme of our DIS, you would find primarily we have white and a use of color on a white background. It's not about splashing color all over the space. So it has not been about subsidizing. Yes, we have made it affordable as anybody else. It is an affordable technology today. It's much more affordable for you to get a color print than it was a few years ago. And that's because the market has widened. Uh, and the fact that our technology has been about the consistency and the richness of color. I can, I can say this with a sense of pride. I would say nobody understands in this industry color more than Konika Manolta, thanks to our background. You know Konika was into films, Manolta was into imaging. We are actually the inventors of SLR. And when we both we merged, we took a decision to actually divest both the core businesses and went into printing. And today, this is what we have done. Today, we have a leading market share in more than uh, 23 countries. In India, we have a dominating market share in production of more than 40%. And in A3 color, we are again a market leader with 29%. So it has been about taking uh, certain innovations in color. We understand, of course, that Kolika Minolta holds very high market share when it comes to wedding printers. But I'd also like to understand what type of market share that uh, Kolika Minolta holds in the consumer and enterprise range of printers. Okay. See, the, when you talk of production, it is all enterprise. Right? Uh, when you talk of office, A3, again, it is enterprise and SME. But when you talk of A4, A4 is a strategic move for us. For us, the customer doesn't stop with selling it to an office. Typically, it is the people who are in an office who use and touch and feel our technology are the end customers, consumers. That is why we make a lot of changes. Typically, for example, you would find us using a blue button on our, as a start button. Now, earlier when this industry started, most of them used a green button for a long time. We first shifted to blue, and it was a very simple exercise. Um, a colorblind person can only see this color. So how do we make sure that the end customer who is working in an organization who may be colorblind is still able to efficiently operate? It's as simple as that. Again, if you see there, without coming up to the machine and pulling a tray out, from any distance you can see whether there is paper or not. Simple thing. Fourth, an able-bodied person would tend to actually pull a tray out like this. Right? Just imagine a person who is sitting on a wheelchair. Right? He would never be able to put a hand from underneath, whereas he would tend to do it from top. So you have handles which can be either open from top or from bottom. So it has been about customers' experience technology, technology. Today we are not an A4, let us say. When they go home, they don't experience our brand. So that is the reason we introduced also the A4 line of products. So it's not only about them experiencing it in office, but also when they home, they have an ability to be able to experience our products and our technology. The second is if you take any enterprise or any organizations, no one has only A3 or only A4. Many a time, depending on the workload, they would tend to use both or tend to use either of them. So why not participate in both the markets? So it's a strategic move for us, that is to take care of certain Soho segments and SME and an enterprise that they should be able to do that. But as of now, so it is, as from what you just said, I understand it's an expanding. It is expanding. Okay, but do it is just we started. Like market leaders in that. No, area? no, no. We have just started two years ago. Our numbers, when you come in compared to other brands, are small. But it's growing year on year. We are doubling it year on year. That's good news for us. And uh, we are building a small network of partners who are able to now promote the product. Okay. And as of now, in in terms of consumer versus enterprise, which has been more profitable. See, consumer is a very small segment which we do through A4. It's a very small segment, which is primarily the Soho segment. It's 
Our bulk of the revenue is primarily from production and office. Okay. A3. Okay. Uh, now, you, when we entered, you showed us a lot of uh, innovations in terms of how we utilize hue technology to enhance the nature of color. So, now coming specifically to graphics art, right? if you could take us through any breakthrough innovations. In See, the graphic cards, perhaps the biggest thing which we have done is uh, on. Uh, uh, two aspects. One is the technology that we have for our toner, which we call the symmetry toner. Now, it's a polymerized toner where each toner particle is cultured. It's like a pearl. You have a coating, a resin, and a pearl. Now, thanks to this, we have been able to reduce the amount of toner deposition on color. One of the reasons why we are able to get such beautiful color on our pearls is because of the technology chemistry we have on so on a thinner layer when you lay, you're able to generate more hues and a much better color output. You don't need thick depositions on that color. And because of that thinner layer, your fusing temperature goes down. Because the fusing temperature goes down, your power consumption on the engines go down. You don't need three-phase connections for our production engines. You operate all of these on. Oh, that's very interesting. So they are extremely. Second, the engines you see behind me, almost 90% is from biodegradable material or from recycled plastic. Koneka Manolta was the first manufacturer to adopt, in this industry, to adopt open loop recycling. The difference between open loop and closed loop is Closed loop is, look, I have created waste, I take it back, and I reprocess it. Open loop is, I don't care from where the waste comes from. I will reprocess and build products. Today, certain our competi I mean, competition is talking of adopt, migrating to open loop, whereas we have been on open loop right from start. So it doesn't matter who has created the waste. So now, from uh, graphics art, now 3D printing. You did mention that Punika Minota is not currently in and the, I think the prevailing view is that it is still a very, very niche market. So by how long do you think it's going to take for that to proliferate into a consumer space? I don't know, frankly. Okay. I would not. I have not done much work on 3D printing. Okay. So I would not like. It. That's fine. okay. Now uh, another new trend amongst printers is, of course, for it now to be connected to various different devices and to various portals. Be it mobile and cloud connectivity. So in in terms of just connectivity to other devices, what has Konica Minota been innovating in that space? We have actually been the prime movers on that. Behind me you see this. It's a tablet. You can you can go anywhere in the world, you can access through this tablet. When we introduced this, uh, we were in the forefront of connecting to cloud. We were in the forefront of connecting to mobility solutions. We have, you can go to our website and download PageScope Mobile that enables you to connect directly to our product. And on the native format, which means printing on native files, you can print Excel as Excel, uh, Word as Word, PDF as PDF. And you can also have secure access on our mobile platform, which means if you do not have the authority to print to this device, you can't print to it. So, we have been in the forefront of this.